All right, so here we're going to go over Dalton's atomic theory. And Dalton came up with this theory in 1808. And in recent years prior to 1808, remember we have the law of conservation of mass. That was uh, Antoine Lavoisier came up with that one, which says that matter can neither be created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction. And then we also have uh, the law of definite proportions, complements of Joseph Proust, which says that for any compound, there's a definite ratio of the constituent elements in that compound, regardless of where you got it or how it was, how the compound was prepared. And then you also have the law of multiple proportions, which was uh, which was formulated by Dalton himself. And remember, the law of multiple proportions just says that if we have two compounds of the same two elements, if we if we hold you know if we hold the mass of, of of one of those elements constant, then we can express the ratio of the masses of the other element in small whole numbers. So Dalton's atomic theory basically explains these three laws, and it, Dalton's atomic theory was very very uh, remarkable at the time. However, there are some differences between Dalton's atomic theory and the atomic theory of today. So we're going to go over uh, all of the parts of Dalton's atomic theory, and we're also going to go over some of the similarities and differences between Dalton's atomic theory and today's atomic theory. So the first part of Dalton's atomic theory says that all matter is composed of atoms, and that atoms are indivisible and indestructible. And this fact was accepted for a very, very, very long time after, after Dalton came up with this theory. But as technology, you know, increased and newer techniques became available of, you know, separation, it became known that the atoms are actually composed of subatomic particles, you know, like protons, neutrons, electrons, things like that. And in nuclear chemistry, um, if you carry out a nuclear reaction, you can also destroy an atom. So in a chemical reaction, you can't destroy an atom, but in a nuclear reaction, you can. So that's just sort of a, a, a small difference between uh, uh, Dalton's theory and today's theory. So let's go over the second part. Second part says that all atoms of a given element have the same mass and other properties that distinguish them from other atoms. Now, while the second part of this sentence is true, that all atoms of a given element have properties that distinguish them from other atoms, it's not necessarily true that they all have the same mass. In fact, there do exist atoms of the same element that have different mass, and we call those isotopes. They differ only in the number of neutrons. And today, the way, the way that we characterize an element is we say that instead of all <clears throat> atoms of a given element have the same mass, we say that all atoms of the, of the same element excuse me, all atoms of a given element have the same atomic number, which is simply the number of protons in the nucleus of that atom. So, a little bit different now, but like I said, pretty remarkable at the time. Let's go over the third part. The third part says that atoms combine to form compounds in simple whole number ratios. That is still true today. Now let's go over the fourth part. The fourth part says that an atom of one element cannot change into an atom of another element. Chemical reactions involve the re simply the rearrangement of atoms. So. The way that atoms are bound together changes in a chemical reaction, but the atoms are not changed from one atom to another, is what Dalton was trying to say here. And this 
is, uh, you know, th this is actually a, sort of an oversimplification as well because, uh, again, when we consider nuclear chemistry, in a nuclear reaction, indeed an atom can change from I into another type of atom. It can capture, you know, some other subatomic particle from somewhere, and, you know, you can have a carbon, you know, that turns into a nitrogen. That, that is possible with, with a nuclear reaction, but not in a chemical reaction. So, Dalton's atomic theory, theory applies mainly to chemical reactions. So, there you have it. That is Dalton's atomic theory.